Hello, and welcome to another installment of Morrow's YouTube Safety Training Series, Access Safety. Our topic today is hearing conservation. This material has been developed through a partnership that we have here at Morrow with the Consultation, Education, and Training Division of MIOSHA, and we're very grateful for that partnership. There is a standard, a regulation, that's uh, enforced by MIOSHA on this topic, and we'll make references to the standard um, throughout the course of the program. Our objectives today will include a discussion of noise exposure, uh, a definition of the noise levels at which um, employers are obligated to respond and protect their employees, a little bit about the process of hearing loss, and some of the details associated with the MIOSHA standard on hearing conservation, audiometric testing, and a couple of different types of equipment that are used to protect employees and to protect their hearing. Your employer is responsible for determining the level of noise in the workplace and identifying employees who are exposed to noise levels at or above 85 decibels averaged over a typical workday. This is called an eight-hour time-weighted average, or TWA. Noise is defined as unwanted, excessive, or dangerous sound. If an employee is exposed to sound levels uh, above 85 decibels over a sustained amount of time, then hearing loss can occur. It occurs in the inner ear. A short exposure to excessive noise may cause temporary hearing loss. But if the exposure stops, hearing can return to normal. This is usually referred to as bounce back. However, if you are continually exposed to excessive noise, parts of the ear can be damaged permanently, resulting in permanent hearing loss. Some of the warning signs of hearing loss include difficulty in hearing consonants such as S, the S sound, or T, the T sound in normal conversation. There can be difficulty separating speech from background noise, complaints from others that you are talking too loudly, having to turn up the volume on the TV or the radio, uh, difficulty hearing ringing telephones or whistles, or difficulty hearing soft sounds such as a child's voice or rippling water, or constant ringing in the ears. As it relates to the workplace, there are two types of noise. Continuous or ongoing noise resulting from the use of equipment such as grinders, lathes, or other power equipment. And the second uh, type of noise is impulse noise or periodic noise that would result from the use of pneumatic or impact tools or explosives. Both types of noise can be harmful depending on how loud it is and how long you are exposed. With regard to noise exposure, there are three factors to keep in mind. One is the loudness of the sound. Two is the duration or length of the exposure. And three is the distance from the source of the noise. When an employee is exposed to high noise levels, serious permanent damage can result. Although you may believe you are getting used to high noise levels, this usually means you are enduring hearing loss. As a rule, if the noise level is loud enough that you have to get used to it, hearing protection is probably necessary. Another rule of thumb for noise is that if you must raise your voice to be heard in the workplace, noise levels should be evaluated to ensure excessive exposures are controlled. Some examples of different uh, types of noise levels and loudness is uh, measured in decibels or dBA. Some typical decibel levels are a whisper at 20. Normal conversation generally occurs at about 65 decibels. A kitchen blender is as loud as 85 decibels. A lawnmower, 95. A rock concert, 105 decibels and at the high end, a jet taking off 145 decibels. The MIOSHA standard, titled Part 380, Occupational Noise Exposure, defines an action level uh, as an eight-hour, time-weighted average noise exposure of 85 decibels. It's at this point that an employer becomes obligated to develop a hearing conservation program, conduct noise monitoring, 
do audiometric testing of its employees, issue personal protective equipment to make sure that the excessive sound levels do not harm an employee's hearing, conduct training on this topic, and to keep certain records. Audiometric testing monitors the sharpness of your hearing. If an employee is exposed to that action level at work, a baseline or an original test is conducted to determine hearing capabilities, and then an annual recheck is done to gauge whether or not hearing loss has occurred. This tests the ability to hear various decibel levels and, as I mentioned, is given annually to employees who are exposed uh, to 85 decibels or higher over an eight-hour time-weighted average. There are two major types of hearing protection devices that you can wear to reduce noise exposure to below 85 decibels. One is ear plugs and one is ear muffs. Ear plugs fit into your ear canal, blocking excessive noise from reaching the inner ear and causing damage. When using foam insert ear plugs, with clean hands, roll the plug into a small crease-free cylinder between the thumb and forefinger. Next, with the other hand, pull the ear outward and upward to allow the ear canal to open. And third, insert the plug well into the ear with fingertip and hold in place to allow the plug time to fully expand. A few things to remember about ear plugs. They should be checked and adjusted throughout the workday in order to be effective, they must fit tightly in the ear canal. Hands should be clean prior to inserting earplugs. Reusable earplugs should be cleaned with soap and water and then stored in their case. And earplugs should be replaced whenever they show signs of wear. The other type of hearing protection, ear muffs, are worn over the ear, preventing excessive noise from entering the ear canal. To use ear muffs, first inspect the inner linings for cracks, tears, or other signs of wear that will compromise the equipment's ability to protect employees. Center the ear muffs so that equal pressure is distributed around the ears for a tight seal. Push aside hair and earrings to keep from interfering with the seal created by the ear muff, and make sure that glasses or other eye protection doesn't interfere with that seal. A couple of things to remember about ear muffs. The seal should be checked and adjusted throughout the workday. When finished, the cushions should be cleaned with a wet cloth, and ear muffs should also be replaced whenever they show signs of wear. Employers in Michigan have an overarching safety responsibility defined by MIOSHA under the General Duty Clause, which is to maintain a workplace that's free from any recognized hazards. If there is something going on in the workplace that can harm an employee, the employer has the obligation to respond. As it relates to noise in the workplace, um, the employer can respond in three ways, as they can to any hazard. The first uh, objective would be to eliminate it. So in this particular case, if there is a piece of equipment that's excessively loud, as an employer, if I could identify a substitute machine uh, that could accomplish the same goal but ran quieter without as high a noise level, uh, I have eliminated the hazard. If I can bring that uh, decibel level down below the action level, well below the action level, then I've eliminated the hazard of excessive noise to the employee. If that machine can't be replaced, I could also have the option of containing the hazard. In this particular case with noise, that could be accomplished through containing it with uh, a wall, a curtain, some type of a baffle or other device, um, other instrument, uh, other material that kept the noise. It didn't eliminate the hazard, but it kept the noise from reaching the ears of the employee where it might cause damage. But the third and uh, final um, option and layer of protection, really, the last line of defense is hearing protection, personal protective equipment uh, designed for employees either through earplugs or ear muffs. Hearing conservation is a very important part of workplace safety as a prolonged exposure can, to excessive noise can cause serious and permanent hearing damage. I hope this information has been useful. Um, if you have questions, um, feel free to contact me through the information that now appears on your screen or if you would like more information on the regulation direct from MyOSHA, their contact information and website is also appearing on the screen. Thanks very much and be careful out there.
Good? Yeah. Hello, and welcome to another installment of Morrow's What Am I Saying? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another installment of Morrow's video. What? what? <laughs> okay. Your employer is responsible for determining the level of noise. <laughs> <clears throat> How's my hair? <laughs>